welcome back students now in this short video we will learn about the attachment of the soft tissue and relation of the nerves and vessel to the body and to the ramus of the mandible then i will tell you about the ossification of mandible and then lastly i will tell you the age changes uh, in the mandible so let us see the attachment of the muscle first we will see the attachment of the muscle on the body and ramus and this will include both origin as well as the insertion the origin of a muscle that is called as buccinator this begins from the third molar teeth here and then it runs on to the oblique line see here where i am drawing this with the pink color here this is the origin of the from the oblique line it is the buccinator muscle okay so this is hmm, just from posterior side of the third molar teeth okay so this is the important origin that is the buccinator muscle then near the lower border near the lower border of the body just above the lower border on the external surface of course not the um, base but on the external surface where i am marking it here this is the origin of platysma okay let me draw if i can draw it here okay this is the origin from here posterior to the third molar and if i draw this is the buccinator and here is the let me have this color blue color i am not having the blue color right now okay this is the platysma okay this muscle is the origin is the platysma so it is buccinator buccinator muscle okay b u double c i n a t o r buccinator and this is the platysma platys t y p l a t y platysma s m a platysma platysma muscle that is the origin okay this is the origin and then there are the two insertions are seen in the ramus here through the rough surface area on the lateral surface of the ramus okay on right as well as on left side this quadrilateral area which is rough and this gives insertion to the muscle called as masseter masseter muscle and then there is a insertion on to the anterior border and to the tip of the coracoid process it is the tip of the coracoid process here and this sorry not coracoid it is coronoid it is the coronoid process here and on the medial surface here this is the medial surface so i will draw it here also this is on the medial surface this is the insertion of a muscle okay so on the external west anterior border and on the medial surface this is the coronoid process and it, this muscle which is inserting is temporalis temporalis muscle okay temporalis muscle okay so this is the insertion of temporalis muscle on coronoid process hmm? on coronoid process right so these are the attachment on the external and internal surfaces here let us come to the internal surface on external surface we have covered let us come to the insertion and origin on to the body and ramus on the internal surface i will just draw a origin here on this mylohyoid line because this is the internal or medial surface this is the mylohyoid line and muscle attached here is the mylohyoid muscle so this will be the mylohyoid muscle hyoid muscle so this is the muscle origin of the mylohyoid muscle then the insertion will be here at the angle okay on medial surface where there is a rough surface is present here okay a deep rough surface this will give insertion to a strong muscle and that is the medial pterygoid it is called as medial pterygoid muscle okay muscle of mastication and temporalis we have already seen on the coronoid process okay on the coronoid process 
there will be insertion of in the mm, pterygoid fovea on the neck of there on the neck deep uh, depression is here on the anterior surface of the neck and that insertion is for that of the lateral pterygoid muscle lateral pterygoid muscle so most of the insertion you have seen they are in the ramus on the lateral surface it was temporalis and masseter again the muscle of mastication lateral pterygoid and medial pterygoid they are again the muscles so all four muscles of mastication they are attached or inserted onto the ramus while the body gives from external surface only one origin there are other muscles which are very small muscles of face but um, this buccinator is there from the oblique line and on mylohyoid line this is the mylohyoid muscle which is the origin let us come to see the relation of the nerves first okay we will see that there is the relation of a nerve on to the neck of the mandible okay on to the neck of the man which wind rounds the neck this is the auriculo temporal nerve this is called as auriculo temporal nerve then in the notch coming from the going from the notch towards the masseter muscle Mm, muscle on the external to this muscle deep to this muscle this will go and this is called as nerve to masseter okay this is called as nerve to the masseter so please note down okay nerve to the i have no space okay nerve to masseter masseter muscle okay this will be going to the masseter muscle nerve to the masseter and then this is the auriculo temporal nerve and then in the Uh, I mean to say, in the mandibular foramina, will go a strong, I mean, say, thick nerve here, and that is the inferior alveolar nerve, which will go into the mandibular canal, and then will come out here from the external surface, which will run upward and backward, and this is called as the mental nerve. Okay, mental nerve. So this is mental nerve, which is branch from this inferior. alveolar nerve inferior alveolar nerve which will go into the mandibular canal along with the artery inferior alveolar artery okay and this before going into the foramina this mandible inferior alveolar nerve and artery they will give a branch which will run into the this groove okay mandibular groove here it will run, run into the mylohyoid groove not mandibular mylohyoid groove it will run into the groove this was line don't confuse with it this is groove and they will grow in the groove and go right up to the anterior end okay and this is the mylohyoid nerve and vessel they will be called as mylohyoid nerve and artery you can call it mylohyoid nerve so from inferior alveolar nerves and artery in this mylohyoid nerve and artery will arise which will run into the mylohyoid groove okay mylohyoid groove okay the other nerve which is in relation to this medial surface is it is related just inferior to the third molar to last molar this place and this now is the lingual now i will just write it here only okay lingual lingual now branch of mandibular so this is the lingual now is here and i think this completes the nerves which are in relation to the mandibular mandible are both on external as well as mostly they are on the internal or medial surface this now sir lirate okay then an artery that is inferior alveolar artery we have seen and this comes out from that of the maxillary artery so just on to the medial aspect below the neck here is the maxillary artery is also related okay which will give a masseteric branch and this is the inferior alveolar branch which are coming out so this is the maxillary artery which is in relation but remember that the two glands are also related which we have seen on the inferior i'm sorry on to the medial surface there were the two gland fossa for two glands this is the sublingual fossa 
so this gland is the sublingual gland and this gland is the submandibular fossa the submandibular gland so they gland but they are separated from each other by mylohyoid muscle okay they are so one is within the oral cavity and one another is outside the oral because mylohyoid forms the floor of the muscle forming the floor of the oral cavity so there are there is one more artery which is important one okay and this artery it just grew the inferior border of the body and then lies deep to this submandibular fossa <coughs> i will say in the submandibular gland winds round around the posterior margin and this is the facial artery this is called as facial artery loop okay so this is the facial artery important artery okay in this relation where on the outer surface you can feel the pulsation of it okay so this where the relations of the muscles origin insertion nerves blood vessels and the glands okay and the glands in relation to the body and the ramus of the mandible body and the ramus of the mandible okay let us we go to the now we go to the ossification of this uh, uh, i mean to say mandible okay the mandible partly develops into the uh, membrane and partly develops by the cartilage so most of the part of the mandible it develops uh, in the membrane which is nothing but the fibrous envelopes of the macula's cartilage okay in which the center in membrane appear at the sixth week of intrauterine life and it forms the bone okay then uh, the ends of this there is the cartilaginous ossification is there for coronoid process it is cartilaginous condylar process it is also cartilaginous and the anterior end of the macula's cartilage okay on one half of the mandible this also develops from that of the macula's cartilage okay macula's uh, cartilage now thus the i mean say the bone of the right mandible and the left mandible hmm, body they unite with each other at symphysis menti okay uh, around the one year of age of a child okay one year of age after birth it, they unite and then now no longer there are right and left part of the mandible it becomes a hard susceptible body okay so this is how the mandible develops in cartilage as well as in the membrane let us come the last part of this video about the age changes okay age changes in mandible okay when a child is of one year of age then the mandible is uh, a i mean to say almost have united at the symphysis mantii but then you will see that in this mandible there is no teeth okay are very a few teeth are present at the age of the incisor teeth are there okay and you will see that this mental foramina this is the mental foramina mental foramina it is present near the lower border of the mandible and the coronoid process this is the coronoid process is at a higher level than that of the condylar process okay it is at a higher level and the mental foramina is close to the lower border this is because near the upper border there are presence of the milk and permanent tooth buds are there so that mental foramina remains there but later as the age advance advances and the the milk tooth they are erupted then the mental foramina starts shifting towards the middle of the body and because of the deposition of bone near the lower border similarly the head will i mean to say uh, will go towards the at a higher level than the coronoid process as age advances and then the lower border of the ramus and the posterior border of the ramus they meet at an obtuse angle which is around 140 degree 140 degree but when we see the mandible of an adult we will see that hmm, the angle of the mandible is not very much obtuse but between the 
lower border of the ramus and the posterior border of the ramus the angle is around 110 okay so this angle of the mandible is around 110 and the mantle foramina is almost in the middle of the lower border and the alveolar border and but this foramina which was directed forward is now directed backwards and upward it is directed backwards and upwards and here you can see that the conoid I mean say in this not very well seen in this but the mandibular I mean say this condylar process is almost here at the same level with that of the I mean to, with that of the uh, uh, condylar process that is the coronoid process and condylar process in this specimen they are almost at the same but in because it is more towards the old age but in the case of an, a young adult, okay, that is after 16, 18 years of age, the condylar process is at a higher level than that the tip of the coronoid process. But at the age start advancing towards the old age, what happens that the teeth, permanent teeth also are lost and the, thus the allular process are absorbed, okay, and there a ridge appears in uh, place of sockets so the mantle foramina goes very close to that of the upper border so the man this mandibular canal must be going very close to the upper border and again the angle become 140 as it was in the before one year of age okay and again the coronoid uh, coronoid process it goes upward as compared at a higher level as compared to that of the condylar process. So these are the age changes and with the shape of this hmm, and about this fact you can determine whether the, uh, this is from a child, from adult or from an old age. Thank you very much for watching this video on the mandible.